AFCON 2023 and the hosts somehow are in the semi-final of their own tournament. They have beaten Mali 2-1 after finishing the game with nine men, playing majority of it with 10. This is the luckiest team I've ever seen in my life. The luckiest. Lupo, I do not know what you and your boys are doing. This is the luckiest team I have ever seen in my life. The fact that they're in the semi-final and they were not even sure they'd make the round of 16 is already insane to me. The fact that they keep on scoring with two minutes left or a minute left in regulation, be it extra time, be it added uh, the normal 90, I will never understand. This team does not create any chances. Today, Mali just... And Mali showed something to me today. Relentless pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure will always make the other team make dumb decisions. Um, that is where Kusunu comes in. Oh my goodness. That was one of the worst performances you'll ever see from a centre-back. In terms of just decision-making, the tackling. Like he was so rushing in his tackles. He was keeping people alongside. He ended up getting a first yellow. Before halftime, you get a second yellow and get a red card. He considered the penalty. Like... Um, the, the one that was supposed to be a penalty, it was his handball in the D. Okay, that, that, that one we can't really fault him because he was going for the ball and his arms were out, right? Um, which was going to be a penalty, but good job VR because that when they actually went to VR and said it was offside, it was the right call. That was actually the right call. And again, VR just doing an amazing job. But Kusunu, you, you have just had one of the worst performances anyone can ever think of. But for some reason, you are still in the semi-final. So I think the best thing that can happen for the coach, Fai, is that learn from this, right? When you see someone is having that type of game, even if it's in the 40th minute, just take him off. Take him off because in the 42nd minute, you'd have just derailed everything about this tournament, right? No, in the it was earlier than that, I think 40th. Um, but Mali, Mali, again, as I said in my prediction, Mali are just a team. They just love having the ball. They completely just pressured could devour. In fact, the only thing is they did not score enough goals. Had Adama Traore scored his uh, penalty in the beginning and Cote d'Ivoire had to chase the game for most of the game, then that would have made them more tired. The fact that it was nil-nil for such a long time, they were not as tired. Um, it was our boy, uh, what's his name? Nene. Nene, who came on uh, off the bench for Adama Traore. By the way, if you guess Adama Traore's name on the back is Nos. The reason why his name is Nos is because of, uh, um, what is it, Need for Speed. Yeah, he's he's quick. So, yeah, Nene's shot was insane. Top corner, one of the goals of the tournament. And then he had to raise his hand and not celebrate. And I was like, are, are you, are you, did you, trans did you get a transfer from, from uh, Cote d'Ivoire? Turns out he was born in Cote d'Ivoire, so that's why he's not celebrating. And apparently many of these Malians were actually born in Cote d'Ivoire. So, there's a lot of they really know the place um but yeah mali mali was so impressive like i don't know how they lost this game it actually doesn't make sense to me adama Traore should have scored that penalty at the beginning that would have just changed everything it would have forced Cote d'Ivoire to attack and yeah nene scored in the seventh first minute and then after that the the only way these games were going to score were through set pieces or crosses coming in and that's how the goal came in right so um, Adingra, the Brighton man, came off the bench and they were just recycling the ball. The ball had just gone into the D, they were just recycling. It came back in. It fell to Adingra, who was the brightest in the D and just finished in the top corner. And uh, it was now 1-1 one, one, and they're going into extra time. And I'm just like, yo, this Cote d'Ivoire team does not make sense to me. Like, it does actually doesn't make sense. How are these... These guys are so lucky. But you know what? When luck comes to you, you have to take advantage. You have to take advantage. Take full advantage. So I can't blame them. Um, yeah, then of course, going into extra time, uh, it was just a, a fair, it was just a fair fight, like nothing really crazy going on up until the last few minutes when um Seiko Fofana's shot, left footed shot, came straight into the D and then um what's his name? Umar Diakite was right in front of the goalkeeper. So when he touched it, it just went away from the defender and the goalkeeper and went straight in. The man took off his shirt. He had just been booked, so he got a red card. And yeah, they had to finish the game with nine men, uh, but it was only a few seconds left. But all in all, like that was... Cote d'Ivoire, I do not know. I don't understand. I actually do not understand. Like someone make me understand how this team is in the semifinals. They are now assured of two more games. Again, positives... Anytime the hosts makes it to the semis, 
or finals, the tournament will always be better. When the host gets knocked out, knocked, knocked out now, the fans don't even want to go to the stadium and they're just dull affairs. But it's it's a good thing. It's a good thing that they're there. So now they're going to face DRC in the other semifinal. Um, those are going to be on Wednesday. And yeah, <clears throat> um, the only thing I have to say is I was quite disappointed in Amari Traore. Um, his actions at the end of the game were just not were not ideal. He actually went to the ref and shoved him. Like, he wanted to fight the ref. Like, they had a shoving match, and he was about to start swinging, and he had to be held back. It was so embarrassing. Like, it was actually very bad. I, I get why he was annoyed, right? Like, that, that game should have ended much earlier, but you can't take it out on the ref like that. You need to show some respect to the officials, regardless of what they do, what, whatever they say, even if they, when the decisions go against you. He was actually quite violent, and I think Kaf will come down on him, like, heavily. So, yeah, um, this Mali team, they've been, they've been together since the under-17s, the under-23s. I think they won the African Championship together. So you can see it's a team that's just been coming up together. The way they, the way they control games, the way they put pressure on teams, the way they they really just cap they, okay the, the only thing that's left is capitalizing on that pressure and actually scoring goals but they they they're so mature footballing wise in how they play and how they conduct themselves and yeah and for some reason this is the first time they've lost a quarter final they either always get to the semi finals or they never qualify for the tournament that's just who they are um but this this version of mali this mali is this is the version of this mali is for the future like Guys need to watch out for this team. This team is going to be something else. And the next AFCON is next year. So um, already, I already have them and Zambia um, as my two teams to really, really watch out for for the next AFCON. And yeah, Cote d'Ivoire are through to the semifinals of AFCON 2023.